All right, so we're going to work on 8B today, and then we're going to do um, worksheet 9 as our kind of closing activity today, some matching. And then your assignment is to do worksheet 10. For homework, it's the last thing on the homework check, but you only have to do the even-numbered equations. When we get there, I'll talk about that again. All right, so this is about matching transformations to their graph and about writing equations. Can identify the parent function and write an equation, including, guys, including finding some weird stretches. Okay, so question number one. <clears throat> What is the parent function? This is on worksheet 8B. Has everybody figured out where I am? This one is numbered 1, okay? Equation number 1. What is the parent function for that? x squared, right? Okay. So what has happened to the x squared? The corner that used to be at 0, 0 will tell us or the vertex, not corner, but that used to be at zero, zero will tell us what has happened. You have to kind of get used to this dot paper. It's a struggle, but it's left how many? Three. How do I put in a left three? No. X plus 3 inside because the vertex is negative 3, 0. So if it, it should tie to vertex form. Okay, but there is a stretch on this one. So I'm going to put an A out here. How did we do that when we did parabolas in the past? We had to put in another ordered pair, right? Now, this dot paper is really hard to tell sometimes if something is hitting a dot. Um, for that reason, I think this one is labeled down here to help us out. Okay, because it's like up here. I can't tell if that's exactly on a dot. This one kind of looks like it's on a dot. But since this one is labeled, I'm going to go with we're supposed to use this one. So what am I going to put in for the Y? One-fifth, is that what it is? Okay. Equals, and we're trying to find A. When x is negative 2. Okay, negative 2 plus 3 quantity squared is just what? 1. So 1a or a is one a is one fifth. So we just have to plug that in back up here. In our equation, please use y equals or f of x equals. Don't just write an expression. It is an equation, meaning it has to have an equal sign, okay? One-fifth x plus three quantity squared. Could we type that in our calculator and set our window to look like this and make sure it looked like this if we wanted to? We certainly could and make sure it was going through those points, okay? All right, question number two is the parent function is just a line, right? We have another recycle bin over here. I don't know if anybody could take that one too. I'm sorry. Kids have been throwing stuff in this one, I think. Okay, I will put a sign on it. If you want me to just dump it in the garbage, I can do that. Okay. Yep. All right, guys, equation two is this guy. It's just a line, so we really want just y equals mx plus b form. So can you figure out what the slope is by counting the dots? Ugh. Well, that looks like 1, and this looks like 1. Down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. Okay, try that one more time to make sure it's working. Down one, two, three, four, five, and over two. That seems to be working, okay? So it was going down five and over two. So the slope is negative five halves. 
And then what is the other thing if we're using slope intercept? We just need to know the y intercept, which is positive 6. So we put a plus 6 on the end and we're good. All right, let's try number 3. Okay, so absolute value of x, and a is going to turn out negative, but we don't need to even worry about that. First, let's figure out it used to go through the origin, right? So it's now shifted which way? Right, 5 and up, up 4. How would you put those in? Minus 5 would be right, good job, and a plus 4 on the back. Now, what we're supposed to do is say y equals a times this and find a point that's on here. How about if we use this one right here? What is that point, guys? 6, 1. Looks pretty good. So I would put the 1 in for the y, the 6 in over here. 6 minus 5 is 1. The absolute value is 1. Do I add the 5 to it? All of this is multiplied together, right? But not the plus 4. So we're going to have to move the 4 over here by subtracting. Then this is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. So A is just what? Negative 3. Absolute value, you can just figure out the slope of the branches, right? So this one is going down 3 and over 1. So you could have done it that way for an absolute value. I'm just practicing plugging in values because you're definitely going to need that on some of these other ones. So we got a negative 3 absolute value of x minus 5 plus 4. Again, you could type it in your calculator to double check that it looked like that and was going through all those same points. All right, what is it? Which one of these is number four, guys? This one way up here. Okay, and what shape is that again? It is a cubic, yes. What does a cubic normally do? Give me some points. Zero, zero, one, one, two, eight, negative one. Okay, so this point like that looks like an inflection point where it kind of changes here. That has shifted to where? That's what how will it help us find the adjust the shift, sorry. And, okay, right four and down two. So who can tell me what that would look like? You said down to, right? Yeah, it is cubed. Thank you. Okay. And we need to figure out if there's a stretch. Um, can we do this dot? Is this right on a dot or not? Is that 6, 6? Okay, 6 equals A times 6 minus 4 cubed minus 2. And that... 2 we need to add over to the other side at some point sooner or later because this is all multiplied together and what would we get there 6 minus 4 is 2 2 cubed is 8 so a is just 1 so there is no stretch we were right when we just said x minus 4 cubed minus 2 the stretch is just 1 it's normal are you okay? And if you looked, it did go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 8, so we could have figured it out. Some of you are going to be faster at these than others. Number 5, who's the parent of that thing over here? Square root graph, very good. Normally it goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. So it's definitely shifted. How do we figure out how far left? and down. Yeah, we count that little point right there. Is it 
five, six, seven, eight left. And negative six, maybe. Okay, who wants to put that in? Square root of x plus eight minus six. Very good. All right, so we have y equals a times this minus six. Uh, can I go that one? What do you think? That looks pretty good to me. This is what I'll tell you guys. If you plug it in and it doesn't come out nice, like a square root, then it's probably not exactly on the dot. I I thought negative 5 would work, but I don't think it's going to work. Is it if I put a negative 5 in here, I'm going to get square root of 3? Maybe that one's not right on. Is this one? Negative 7, negative 2? That one I think will work because if I put a negative 2 in over here, what does all this become? 1 square root of 1 is 1, 1 times a is a. So I need to add that 6 over here, and I get 4. Does that seem right? Instead of going up 1 and over 1, it went up 4 and over 1. Okay. <laughs> Don't be surprised to remember if there are really ugly stretches on the quiz because we want you to be doing it this way. So instead of four, it might be, you know, five thirds or something disgusting. Everybody good? All right, number six. Does anyone know that parent function? Yeah, the cube root. Good job. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Down in the corner there was some hints. Yep. That is a cube root, but um, by the way, normally the cube root goes this way, so I think it's been reflected at some point. Okay, but let's deal with normally the cube root would go through negative 1, 0, 1, and be doing this. So this magical point right here that used to be at 0, 0 has been shifted left 1 and down 4. Is that what I heard you say? Okay, so how do you want to write that? Cube root of x plus 1 minus 4. Good job. Okay. Um, let's try this dot right here. What do you think? Negative, negative 2, negative 2, okay? So I'll try that. Negative 2 equals a cubed roots of negative 2 plus 1 minus 4. Okay, some of you are going to say we can't have a negative number, but we can when it's a cube root, right? The cube root of negative 1 is, no, negative 1, yes. I'm going to add this 4 over here, and then I get a times negative 1. So what do I have to do? Yeah, divide by negative 1, get negative 2. So final answer, anybody? Okay. Is that all of them on that page? Okay. Before we finish up today, we're going to maybe do a tricky one off worksheet 10 that you have to do, okay? Because there's some reciprocal functions on that page. But for now, let's talk about worksheet 9. If I can somehow switch to the other, there we go. Worksheet 9. Look at this piecewise function. Would you like for me to have told you you had to write the equation for this disaster? Look. It's a line less than negative 6. It's a uh, constant function. Then it's a squared parabola. Then it's an absolute value. Then it's a constant function. Then it's a line again. Okay. Is it just a graph? What is this used for outside of the 
Yes, it not this particular one, but certainly some crazy piecewise functions like this could be like the mold to make some weird shaped piece of plastic, right? That was doing something. Yeah, this one's just weird, but all right. So we're going to study the transformations. These are the choices. Can we run through these real fast, guys? Um, what does this first one do? <laughs> it's multiplied by two on the outside. What does that do? No. Is it on the Y or the X, guys? It 2 times f of x, which makes the y's go up twice as much. Yes. So it's a vertical stretch. Um, no. It Well, it might look thinner, but it's just going up faster. Yes. This is also a vertical stretch, so we'd have to decide which is it going by 2 or 3. This one has two things. It's what What's this one doing? Yes, so it's compressed towards the X. Or a vertical shrink, you could call it, in that way. And then the negative does what? Reflected over the X. What's the next one do? You're good at this one. Left seven. Where's another easy one? What about these last two? Right, five, down, six. This one, left, five, down, six. Can you try this one over here? Yes, in that other order, though. It's reflected over X and then shifted down, nine. Anybody know the negative inside is reflected what? Yes. It's an absolute value. So this is reflected over the y-axis, so flipped left to right. And then do you, do you remember what the thing does inside? That's the crazy one. The absolute value inside does. Sorry. Yes. So it cuts off the left side, and then it makes it symmetric with the Y. Do you remember? So if I had this was my graph, it would cut this whole half off and then do that. Okay. Um, that's this one, by the way. What's the negative do on the, or the absolute value do on the outside? Yes, it has all the y's positive, okay? Now, these are the two I'm really worried about. This is a horizontal something to the x's, but it's the opposite of what it seems because it's in the parentheses. So this is not stretching, it's what? Shrinking or compressing, which way? Yes, it's changing it horizontally, so it's compressing it in towards the y-axis. It changes the x-intercepts, not the y. So this one is going to stretch it out away from the y. Stretch it left to right, because it's changing x-intercepts. All right. Here's the original function. Here's number or letter A. Can we figure out what it did? I think, look at all the X intercepts stayed the same. So it's not an X issue. It's what? It's a Y issue, a stretch. Okay. It used to go up to what? Maybe four, question mark? And now it's going up to... Maybe 8, question mark? So 2f of x? Okay, definitely not 3, right? Because it didn't go above 10. All right, b. 
That bad boy is upside down. You think squished? Yeah, it used to go up here to four, right? But now it's only going down to like negative two. So yeah, compressed a little bit vertically though, right? So negative one half f of x. C? Mm, yes, the absolute value and then f of x inside the absolute value because the y's are all positive. D, it doesn't really look like a size change, does it? Shifted, is it left six? Is that a choice, just left six? It is, oh, left seven? Wasn't that the choice, left seven up here? Because, yeah, I can't really tell, but that could have been 7, and then it's shifted. So left 7 is f of x plus 7. Good call. Um, now we're on E. Ooh, what happened here? F, absolute value of x, but not the one with the negative, right? because the right side is still the right side, so it didn't reflect, okay? We just cut off the left. Um, what about F? Yeah, didn't they flip it first? They flipped it first, which I won't be able to draw. Oh yeah, just like that. They flipped it, but then they cut off all that left, right? And made it symmetric. So that one is this. Yep. I wouldn't put that on a quiz. All right, what about this guy? It, it is squished horizontally, she said. Everybody good? It's compressed in this way. Now, because it used to cross out here at like 12, right, on the X, and now it's at like 6. Yes, it's not the one-half one, even though it seems like it should be. Remember, in the parentheses, it's the opposite of what it seems. H? Yeah, that's the stretch left and right, because, like, the Ys, the height is still the same, but instead of being at, like, 6 here, it's crossing way out at 12. So that's uh, x over 2 or 1 half x. All right. G, H, I. I comes after H. Sometimes. This is looking upside down. Which ones were upside down? This one was upside down. The negative 1 half. And this one is upside down. So if I just drew it upside down, uh -huh, uh -huh, it would have gone like this. Okay, it would have gone like that. But it's also shit slid down. It used to have an intercept at zero, zero. Does it look like it might be at negative nine now? Yeah. Are we talking about the y-intercept? It was at 0, 0, and here is almost to negative 10, right? All right, J. I think all we have left are the like left, right, up, down jobbies. What did this one do? Down and to the right? That would be... Down six, they both are, and what's to the right? Minus five. So this little corner here, right five, would be over at about four. And down, that seems okay. All right, is that it?
Okay. Let's see if I can find worksheet 10. I'm not feeling confident here. Because I just wanted to do one with you. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Go to the back of worksheet 10. You only have to do the even numbered equations, I think. Is that ones that are circled? Yeah, no, the even numbered equations, not the whole. Oh, there it is, worksheet 10. Why did I not find this when I looked earlier? Okay, worksheet 10. And go to the ones on the back. Like, do you have to do 21? Because you only have to do the evens. Okay, I'll do 21. Because it will help you do, which one? Do you have to do 22? Okay. On those reciprocal functions, 21 and 22, everybody paying attention? What you are looking for is it used, it used to do this where the asymptotes crossed at 0, 0, right? So now the asymptotes are crossing over here. So the graph actually shifted left. Is that five, guys? And up one, two, three. Anybody thinking that's negative five, three, where those are at? So then we'd have y equals, okay, this is the original function. How do you say left five? You all right, Martin? Plus five on the x, right? And then how do you say up three? Plus three on the whole thing, yeah. All right, the issue is there's also a stretch, and the stretch is going to be up here or multiplied onto the whole thing, whichever way you think of it. So somebody figure out that ordered pair right there. Negative four, six. Yes, no. Negative... What? Negative 4, 5? Okay. So if I put in negative 4, 5, I would have 5 equals A over negative 4 plus 5 plus 3. So what is A? This is all 1 divided into by A is just this. A is 2, so final answer for that one would be 2 over x plus 5 with a plus 3 on the back. How about if you work on 22 right now while I'm here to help? On number 22, the asymptotes cross here at positive 5, positive 2. Is that right, guys? So it's this guy that's gone right 5 and up 2. And then you need to put in a point like maybe 6, 6 looks like a point you could try to find the A value. Is it one? I don't think it's one. Four. Right five would be minus five, up two. And then I said try six, six, right? Six minus five is just one down there. Yeah, so if you subtract two, you get four, because this is just one. So where are you writing that on 22 here? y equals 4 over the quantity x minus 5 with a plus 2 on the back. 
All right, is there anything else that looks confusing? Did we do one of every kind? I don't think we did a square root today, but, well, yes, we did. Didn't we do one square root one? We did a cube root. We did an absolute value. Okay. I don't know why this says you may skip one through three. I think it only made you do two anyway, didn't it? Yeah, you can skip one and three. 